While the first blockchain, Bitcoin, was used for financial transmission, other blockchains have expanded beyond that, beyond a simple monetary function. Smart contracts have a chance to really revolutionize how we do business, basically by taking away trusting another person. All you have to do is trust the protocol, and that theoretically, like I said, should reduce transaction fees or the cost of doing business in general. This disruption may extend to a variety of industries. We're already seeing a lot of case studies, a lot of companies involved in supply chain, education, accounting, banking, government, nonprofit, already adopting or at least exploring blockchain technology. So let's get into these specific examples. The first is provenance or supply tracking, tracking of the supply chain or supply chain management. So supply chain is basically just a bunch of different entities working together in order to get a product from production to the shelf or to a specific person. The problem with this is it takes many different parties, a producer, a transporter, possibly a vendor, to all work together. Uh, that is why blockchain technology is so perfect. There is no one ruling party that has control over the process of uh, the, the supply chain that's being tracked on a blockchain. Basically, it makes it a lot easier for untrusted different parties to work together by giving them equal privileges and only letting the individuals uh, that are supposed to see certain information see that information. So for example, if you're, uh, if you're the producer of a good, you might have to oversee the whole supply chain. If you are a truck driver taking it from point A to point B, then handing it off to another truck driver, you only need to know about that specific, your specific function. You don't have to oversee the whole process. This is actually really important and can possibly save lives because the problem with uh, food in the supply chain is often you might pass along a product that has to ultimately be recalled because it's dangerous. Uh, the problem with this is it's tough to pinpoint exactly where that product came from. The best you're going to do is pinpoint it to a specific lot in a warehouse somewhere. But what if you could target or pinpoint a specific shipment that has gone bad? We're actually starting to see people uh, implement blockchain technology in order to do just that. It's also a great tool for dispute resolution because everything can be public. Everybody has access to uh, a, their same to a cryptographic receipt that outlines every single thing that happens during the supply chain process. Another thing that the blockchain could track are certifications and credentials. I'd like to tell a story to explain why this is so important. Uh, there was a doctor practicing in Florida and problem with this doctor was that he turned out to be only 16 and was an unlicensed was unlicensed and still practicing medicine now if only there was a certain database a public database where that uh, individual's credentials could have been checked and that's the idea of incorporating the blockchain a blockchain into uh, the certification and credentialing fields basically saying that yes, you are licensed to perform a certain function, and then anybody can look, make sure that, hey, you're a reputable, per reputable person, you're licensed, you can provide the service that you say you are going to do and do so safely. Accounting is another field that just makes a lot of sense that it is going to be impacted by blockchain technology. If you think about it, accounting is all about debits and credits, about all about receipts, uh, assurance, tracking money best thing about a blockchain when it comes to accounting is all the details are public. So you don't have a situation where an accountant that's controlling their company's funds, uh, an accountant has sole control over reporting, which may result in an opportunity for fraud. Instead, you have a transparent blockchain with a public receipt, which makes it very difficult to do anything malicious because everybody can see everything that's going on. So for banking, decentralized digital uniqueness brings about two things that can impact banking. The first is that it can provide the ability to know who has what at what time, so unit of account. And this ability leads us to the next thing that decentralized digital uniqueness can provide, control of your own money. We've relied on banks to be the centralized holder of your funds, and a lot of times they can act as 
gatekeepers. A decentralized network made up of digitally unique participants completely undermines the status quo of centralized banks. Basically, we're in a situation where banks are the, uh, currently the only institution that are able to track who is what and when. Uh, it's not done in a public manner at all. Blockchain is the exact opposite. Everything is done in daylight. Everything, uh, uh, you know who has what, when at every given time. Interestingly enough, instead of ignoring the technology, banks are actually looking to adopt it. Banks are exploring it. Uh, there are several cryptocurrencies that are being used for instant settlement of funds, trying to cut down on that three to five uh, money, day money transfer period. So blockchain technology can really impact nonprofits because nonprofits really rely on transparency in order to garner confidence from their donors so they donate again. Uh, let's use an example. Let's say I want, I'm a nonprofit. I want to start a specific project. I could label a wallet, uh, a wallet saying, hey, you could donate your funds here. Everything in that wallet is going to this specific project. People can then view that wallet, see where the money is being spent, and have a lot more confidence that their funds are going to help people instead of possibly going to overhead or being misused. Blockchains have the unique opportunity to completely revolutionize how we control our own identity and personal data. So we give our personal data over to organizations that aren't good at preserving our privacy. This is the exact opposite of a self-sovereign identity where you are controlling all of your information and you don't need third parties, these big banks, other institutions to uh, control your personal data for you. The advent of blockchain technology and some of the principles that come along with it make this, uh, make this possible. Digital uniqueness makes a self-sovereign identity realistic. Identity theft is a horrible thing to go through. We give our personal data over to organizations that aren't really good at protecting our privacy or our personal data. And this is the exact opposite of what blockchain technology is all about. By adding blockchain technology, digital uniqueness can give users of the internet greater control over their identity and personal data on the web. Really important example of this, let's say I'm making a purchase and somebody needs to check a certain part of my ID for a purchase. I want to buy alcohol, somebody um, has to make sure that I'm of age, of legal age. But I don't just have to prove that I'm of, that I'm, that I'm of age. I have to hand over all of my ID, which has my address, organ donor, uh, organ donor status, uh, other information that isn't needed for that transaction. All they need to do is check my age. self sovereign identity lets you provide only the needed information to conduct the transaction and not excess information that could ultimately be lost or exploited by outside parties.